In the corridors of Swedish American Hospital in Rockford, Illinois, the air was thick with the usual hustle and bustle of medical professionals attending to their duties. For over two decades, G. Joseph had been a neonatal nurse, witnessing countless stories of childbirth and infant care, little did she know that her own tale would unfold one day, forever etching her into the life of a young couple. On that fateful day in April 2004, G. was in the special care nursery when she received a call from the emergency department, a teary-eyed teen boy, clutching a shoe box, stood down the hall, waiting for her, intrigued, she opened the box and couldn't believe her eyes, a three-pound baby lay inside, wrapped in a dish towel and a doll's onesie, swiftly, the hospital staff placed the baby in isolation, working tirelessly to stabilize the fragile newborn, as the hours passed, the teen boy, claiming to be the father, anxiously waited, his tears a testament to the gravity of the situation. G approached him, seeking to unravel the story behind this extraordinary delivery. The teen confessed that he and the baby's 15-year-old mother, Cherish Coates, wanted to give their child up for adoption. G explained the consequences of relinquishing parental rights, offering two parental bracelets as a symbolic connection. In the midst of this emotional storm, a bond formed between G, Cherish, and the young father, Cherish, Burdened by the secrecy of her pregnancy, revealed the challenges she faced alone, giving birth in solitude to avoid disappointing her family, the couple's decision to leave the baby at the hospital in a shoebox, accompanied by a heartfelt note, showcased the depth of their love and desperation. The baby, born prematurely and facing multiple health challenges, miraculously survived the journey to the hospital. Medical specialists treated him for hypothermia, infection and dehydration, marveling at his ability to breathe independently, G. Realizing the weight of the decision Cherish faced, counseled her on various options, emphasizing open adoption, in a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, G. spoke to Cherish without judgment, offering support during a pivotal moment in the teenager's life. Cherish eventually decided to confide in her mother, fearing disappointment but finding unexpected support, with the newfound realization that she had a network of love and assistance, Cherish chose to keep her child. Baby Alan left the hospital four weeks later, and G asked Cherish to promise to stay in school. Over the years, G and Cherish lost touch until a surprising Facebook message reconnected them in 2016. Cherish, now 29 and residing in Glendale, Arizona, revealed a remarkable life. Alan, now 14, was thriving in various activities, including sports and academic pursuits. Cherish had gone on to become a certified nurse assistant, worked in hospitals in Illinois and Arizona, attended law school, and was currently a law clerk. Her aspiration was to become a mental health attorney. Inspired by the compassionate care and guidance she received from G, the story comes full circle, highlighting the enduring impact of empathy and support, G still working at Swedish American Hospital, acknowledges the profound honor of being part of someone's life story, Cherish expresses gratitude for G's influence, emphasizing the enduring connection they share through this unique and extraordinary experience. Next, let's enjoy a story that is similar to this one together on a serene Sunday evening bathed in the gentle glow of the setting sun, the town's exquisite Catholic Church hosted a special event, in Massachusetts, the young priest Mark, a mere 26 years old and in his position for less than a year, was eager to deliver a message, the atmosphere was perfect, with a starry sky and a bright moon casting a celestial aura over the gathering, enchanted by the church's architecture. Mark entered the altar with admiration, his heart captivated by the splendor of the place, the congregation. A sea of eager faces, added to the enchantment as they awaited the carefully chosen words and sermons for the night, the theme of the Mass centered on the idea of following one's heart and talents, recognizing the purpose for which God had created each individual. As Mark opened the Holy Bible in the pulpit, he greeted those present with a warm, good evening, grace and peace to you all. The religious celebration commenced, and Mark eloquently spoke about how God has a unique plan for each of his children on earth urging everyone to strive towards fulfilling that plan in the best possible way, the atmosphere remained serene, and the congregation listened attentively, some nodding in agreement while others reflected on the priest's profound words, however, the tranquility was abruptly shattered when, at a pivotal moment, the church doors swung open with a burst of energy, in rushed a little blonde girl, about seven years old, her eyes brimming with tears, and a desperate plea echoed through 
the sacred space, Daddy, I need you, Mark, momentarily taken aback, interrupted the mass, addressing the distressed girl, can I help you, dear, are you lost, the congregation fell silent, collectively staring in bewilderment at the unexpected intrusion, the tension in the air, already palpable, heightened as the little girl approached the altar, panting and desperate, with a gasp and a trembling voice, she declared, Daddy, Daddy, I need you, Mark, along with everyone else in the church, stood. Frozen, unable to comprehend the unfolding scene, the people, curious and confused, exchanged worried glances, questioning the possibility of a priest having a daughter, attempting to ease the tension, Mark bent down to the girl's height and calmly asked, my dear, you must be confusing me with someone else, where are your parents, how can we help you, however, the little girl, tears streaming down her face, maintained her plea, you're my daddy, and I need your help, please come with me, my mommy, is dying, caught between the desperate plea of a child and the incredulity of the congregation. Mark struggled to reconcile the conflicting realities, he gently reassured the girl, we'll try to help you, but I'm not your father, I'm a priest, and I don't have any children, we'll do everything we can to assist you and your mother, yet, the little girl insisted, you are my father, my mom told me so, as the confusion in the church intensified, the little girl produced a photo from her pocket, a photo that would shatter Mark's world, tears rolling down her face, she pleaded, I told you, you're my daddy, showing him the photograph, Mark, looking at the picture, was overcome with terror, his wide eyes betraying a profound shock, the little girl, now running towards the exit, implored, please come with me, daddy, Mark, his composure shaken, followed her out of the church, leaving the congregation and fellow ministers in stunned disbelief, questions lingered in the air, what was in that photo that terrified him so much, could it be possible that this young priest was the girl's father, the Perplexed churchgoers were left with a myriad of emotions, trying to unravel the mystery that had unfolded before their eyes, however, Mark found himself at a crossroads, unable to envision a life devoted to the priesthood, in his eyes, that promise belonged to his mother, not him, he vehemently argued that she didn't have the right to make such a significant decision for his life. The boy insisted that he hadn't promised anything to God and that he should be allowed to pursue his dream of studying medicine instead of theology during this period of confusion about his future mark found solace in the company of sunny a charming young girl and the daughter of a church member from their youth the two teenagers fell intensely in love embarking on a secret relationship aware of the societal resistance they would face their connection seemed extraordinary almost divinely destined they shared dreams of marriage a family a home and even a dog sunny aspired to graduate and become a teacher. A profession she deeply admired, while wholeheartedly supporting Mark's desire to become a doctor, their plans drew them even closer, forging a bond that appeared unbreakable, however, as Mark turned 18, he faced the biggest fight of his life with his mother, Catherine. Mark's mother was determined to force him into the priesthood, adhering to the promise she had made to God when facing difficulties getting pregnant. Despite Mark's resistance and tears in his mother's eyes, he ultimately succumbed to her wishes, choosing to study theology, this decision, however, came at a cost, the painful separation from Sonny in the abandonment of their dreams, despite the emotional turmoil, Mark embarked on his journey to the priesthood, attending a boarding school for his religious education, the abrupt breakup left both Mark and Sonny with lingering sadness, the memory of their love remaining present in their hearts. Unbeknownst to Mark, Sonny faced her own challenges during those years. Shortly after their breakup, she discovered she was pregnant, fearing that Mark's dedication to becoming a priest would be jeopardized, she chose not to inform him, the birth of their daughter Mia added another layer of complexity to Sunny's life, facing rejection from her family, she struggled to find stability, working various jobs and moving from place to place with Mia in tow. Sunny's life became a constant battle filled with hardships and sacrifices, despite the challenges, she kept Mia's. Existence a secret from Mark, not wanting to complicate his life or bring shame to her own family, Mia grew up without knowing her father, and Sonny endured years of difficulty, all while silently observing Mark's achievements from a distance. Around the age of 25, Sonny's health began to deteriorate rapidly due to extreme exhaustion, fearing she wouldn't survive to care for Mia. Sonny decided to reveal Mark's identity to her daughter, in a weak voice, she showed Mia a photo of Mark during a church service. 
disclosing the truth about her father, Mia, now seven years old, faced the sudden revelation with despair, as Sunny's health declined, Mia, determined to save her mother, took action, while Sunny slept, Mia used her mother's cell phone to locate Mark's church in a neighboring town, about ten miles away, displaying a remarkable level of determination and courage for a child of her age, Mia's courageous journey was far from over, after looking up how to catch a bus on the internet, she navigated her way, through the city, relying on the device's GPS to guide her to the church, it was a remarkable feat for a seven-year-old, demonstrating both determination and resourcefulness, as she arrived at the church, the mass was about to begin, perfectly coinciding with her desperate plea for her father, the congregation, including the ministers, was taken aback by the agitated entrance of this little girl. Amidst the initial confusion, Mia screamed, Daddy, I need you, capturing the attention of everyone. Present, despite the astonishment and uncertainty that enveloped the church, Mark, the young priest, felt a sudden surge of emotions when Mia showed him a photo of herself and her mother, the revelation stirred something deep within him, reopening a chapter of his life that he had fervently tried to forget, Mark's heart raced as he recognized the love he had felt for Sonny, a forbidden emotion for someone in his position. In the quiet moments of the night, he had prayed fervently to God, asking, for the strength to fulfill his religious duty and remove the love he still harbored for Sonny, however, a week before that Mass, Mark had prayed for a sign, seeking divine guidance on his path, little did he anticipate that the sign would come from Mia, his own daughter, the Mass, which he had prepared with the theme of accepting God's plans for one's life, now seemed tailor-made for him. The confirmation came when he noticed a mark on Mia's arm, a hereditary trait passed down through generations in his family. It was an undeniable connection, a sign he had prayed for, overwhelmed by a mix of disbelief and joy, Mark decided to follow Mia, leaving the altar and the bewildered congregation behind, the two boarded the last bus of the night bound for the city where Sonny and Mia lived, Mark's heart raced with a newfound realization as he discreetly stole a glance at his daughter, she, in turn, struggled to contain the whirlwind of emotions on the bus, summoning courage, Mark apologized to Mia, expressing, Regret for not knowing about her existence and vowing never to leave her alone again, Mia, remarkably understanding, reassured him, acknowledging that Sonny had kept her existence a secret to avoid causing problems for him. Upon reaching Sonny's house, Mark was shocked by the impoverished conditions they lived in. Mia rushed to the door, desperately calling for her mother, Sonny, with swollen eyes from crying. Confronted Mark with a mix of disbelief and relief, the reunion was poignant, with Mark and Sonny shedding tears as they embraced after years of separation the night unfolded into a lengthy conversation where Mark and Sonny laid bare the years of resentment, hurt, and longing, the priest grappled with conflicting emotions, torn between his love for God and for Sonny, the mother of his daughter, as dawn approached, Mark faced a pivotal decision a few weeks later, Mark made the courageous choice to resign as a priest, realizing his true purpose was to be a father and a husband. After reflection and prayer, he concluded he couldn't continue serving God in the same way, speaking with his mother, who eventually supported his decision, Mark, now free from the constraints of the priesthood, took care of Sonny and Mia, eventually marrying Sonny with their savings, they bought a modest house, providing a stable home for the family, Mark pursued his dream of medical school and became a dedicated doctor, serving others in a different but meaningful way, the former priest and Sonny witnessed Mia growing up happily, attending good schools and enjoying life, Mark expressed gratitude every day for the unexpected turn of events that brought him the loving family he had dreamed of, the intrusion of the little girl into his mass had indeed changed the course of his life, leading him to a fulfilling journey of love, family, and service to others, now, let's delve into a story akin to this one. An elderly man found himself abandoned by his biological sons but was pleasantly surprised by the kindness of his only adopted son, Mr. Francis, while grocery shopping, Mr. Francis reflected on the apparent lack of support from his ungrateful biological sons, Hugh at 30, Theo at 27, and Diggy at 23 despite being raised with love and care by their single father, the three siblings displayed selfish and spoiled behavior, Mr. Francis, a diligent contractor, had invested in properties for rental income to support his family, as his sons grew older, they showed no interest in education or employment, indulging in 
partying and spending their father's money recklessly despite Mr. Francis's continued support, the sons neither contributed to household expenses nor assisted with chores, one day, Mr. Francis struggled with heavy bags due to his knee injury and back pain, enter Yuri, a 13-year-old selling candy, offering to help carry the bags, Yuri, having faced challenges since the age of 11, impressed Mr. Francis with resilience, grateful, Mr. Francis rewarded Yuri, and a friendship blossomed, despite the indifference of Mr. Francis's biological sons, they let Yuri continue helping around the house, appreciating his cooking skills. At 15, Mr. Francis encouraged Yuri to return to school, emphasizing the importance of education. Yuri enrolled in high school, and their bond developed into a father-son relationship. Despite the son's indifference, Yuri viewed Mr. Francis as his father. Two years later, Yuri received news of his mother's overdose, leaving him lonely. Mr. Francis, concerned, proposed. Adopting Yuri. The announcement displeased Mr. Francis's biological sons, who feared for their inheritance, they schemed to coerce their father into a nursing home before the adoption papers could be signed. The sons successfully forged documents, leaving Yuri powerless. They sold Mr. Francis's properties, leaving him in a nursing home and Yuri in an orphanage. Months passed, and the once lively Mr. Francis grew despondent. Reflecting on the cruelty of his sons, unexpectedly, Yuri, now 18, visited Mr. Francis. Having secured a college spot and a scholarship, Yuri fulfilled his promise, the son's betrayal left Mr. Francis alone, questioning where he went wrong with his children, Yuri's determination injected hope, and he started college, eventually securing a job at 22, Yuri fulfilled his promise, buying a house and returning to surprise Mr. Francis on his 70th birthday, they embarked on global adventures, fulfilling Mr. Francis's dream, Yuri's success brought joy, and he cared for Mr. Francis until his final days, in gratitude, Mr. Francis recognized the divine intervention that led to Yuri's adoption, finding solace, love, and companionship in his adopted son. Take a break and follow me into the next story. In August 2019, Officer Joe Holt of the Independence Police Department in Missouri witnessed a remarkable act of kindness by teenager Tyria Pryor in a grocery store parking lot. Pryor spontaneously assisted an elderly lady struggling with her shopping, prompting Officer Holt to take. Notice, Holt, who had just finished a meal while on patrol, observed the scene from his patrol car. Impressed by Pryor's selfless act, Officer Holt decided to capture the moment, snapping a photo of the teenager in action. He then followed Pryor back to the vehicle he had emerged from and informed his mother of the admirable deed. This wasn't the first time Pryor had demonstrated such kindness. But it still moved his mother to tears, Officer Holt, recognizing the significance of the moment shared the photo on Facebook. And the post quickly went viral, determined to commend Pryor for his actions, Holt faced the challenge of finding the teenager without even knowing his name, with Independence's population of nearly 120,000, tracking down Pryor seemed like a daunting task, especially without his name however, the power of social media and national news coverage played a crucial role. The Facebook post caught the attention of the public, leading to Pryor's identification, a family member, having seen the story. On national news, contacted the police department and provided the information officer Holt needed, independence, unfortunately, faces challenges with property crimes, including burglary, car theft, larceny, and arson, additionally, it has one of the highest rates of vehicle theft in the United States and experiences a relatively high level of violent crimes, the Independence Police Department, comprising over 200 commissioned officers, is committed to protecting life, individual liberty, and property, while fostering positive community relationships despite the difficulties officers face during 12-hour patrols, Officer Holt's commitment to his mission remained strong, in this instance, a simple act of kindness in a grocery store parking lot became a powerful example of compassion, capturing the attention of the community and highlighting the positive efforts of both Officer Holt and Tyria Pryor. Despite the abundance of culinary choices available to Officer Joe Holt, his senses remained on high alert as he sat in his patrol car, ready to resume duty after grabbing a meal, as he prepared to exit the vehicle, something caught his eye across the rain-drenched parking lot in the midst of a downpour on that August day, Holt's attention was drawn not to the inclement weather but to a surprising sight, 
across the lot, he observed Tyria Pryor, later identified as the teenager, running through the rain, shedding his jacket in the process, a peculiar action considering most people would seek shelter from such weather. However, Pryor's unusual behavior wasn't the only thing that captured Officer Holt's attention, amidst the rain, an elderly woman struggled to reach her car without wearing a coat, instead of seeking refuge, Pryor, with a kind heart, ran over to assist her, an act that warmed Officer Holt as he witnessed it. In his Facebook post describing the incident, Officer Holt reflected on the significance of the moment. He expressed frustration with the hate propagated by various factors and praised. Pryor's act of love, the officer highlighted that Pryor, young black male, selflessly shielded an elderly white female from the rain, emphasizing the positive nature of the encounter. What struck Officer Holt even more was the seemingly instinctive and unspoken nature of Pryor's actions, the teenager acted as if on autopilot, without seeking praise or announcing his intentions, impressed by Pryor's genuine kindness. Officer Holt believed that such a commendable gesture deserved recognition. Following the heartwarming encounter, Officer Holt decided to approach Pryor and his mother, Eddie Finley, who was behind the wheel of the vehicle. Eddie Finley initially felt fear, assuming she might have done something wrong, given the uniformed officer's approach. However, to her surprise, Officer Holt commended Pryor for his admirable act, expressing his impression and pride. As Officer Holt described the incident on Facebook, Eddie Finley, overwhelmed with emotion, couldn't hold back tears. Upon learning about her son's selfless deed, in this unexpected encounter amidst the rain, a simple act of kindness stood out, creating a powerful moment that transcended preconceived notions and prejudices. In August 2019, Officer Joe Holt shared his awe-inspiring encounter with teenager Tyria Pryor on Fox 4 News. Holt expressed his genuine thrill, unable to let Pryor's selfless act go unnoticed. Tyria's mother, Eddie Finley, too, was visibly proud of her son, as Officer Holt conveyed his admiration on Facebook. Holt commended Finley, expressing his belief that she had done an amazing job raising Tyria, and he hoped the teenager would go on to achieve great things. The heartwarming story took an unexpected turn when Officer Holt posted an image on Facebook, capturing the poignant moment he had witnessed. The photo depicted Pryor sheltering an elderly lady from the rain. Placing his arm gently around her shoulders as he guided her to her parked car, the touching image, along with the accompanying narrative, quickly went viral, reaching audiences as far as New York, New Brunswick, and Canada. The story gained traction in local, national, and international news outlets, amassing over 6,000 likes on social media. In a promise made on Facebook, Officer Holt pledged to treat Tyria Pryor to a dinner if their paths crossed again. Inspired by the teen's actions and recognizing the importance of building positive community relationships, Holt went a step further, instead of a passive dinner. Invitation, he encouraged Pryor to reach out to him directly. Within a week, a member of Pryor's family, moved by the story's momentum, came forward with Tyria's identity. Pryor, touched by the recognition, chose Red Lobster for the promised dinner, and Officer Holt kept his word for both Tyria and his mother, Pryor now a motivational speaker in schools around the independence area, spends his time inspiring fourth and fifth graders to pursue their ambitions, his acts of kindness extend beyond that. Rainy day, as he continues to help people, cut grass, and assist the elderly, Tyria's mother, Eddie Finley, expressed overwhelming pride for her son and gratitude for the positive messages people shared about him, despite facing challenges due to vitiligo, a skin condition causing white blotches, Tyria remains resilient and spreads positive vibes. Finley appreciates Officer Holt's compassion that day and is grateful for the wholehearted support he provided, she emphasizes the importance of acknowledging goodness over evil. Highlighting the positive impact Tyria's actions have had on the community, Tyria Pryor's story serves as an example of absorbing life's lessons and doing what one knows is correct, as a result of his random act of kindness, Tyria even secured a job at Ivy, demonstrating that regardless of the individual, doing what is right can lead to positive outcomes. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up so you won't miss any of our next videos, we'll be back with more uplifting and inspiring stories.